I ain't even gonna hold you. I just woke up from the illest power nap of 2019. Whew. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to create. Let's go. I wanna talk about some Photoshop magic. I wanna talk about some Photoshop magic that dropped early this week. Check this out real quick. Oh! We're gonna talk about the rest of some of the features that you can find on Adobe Photoshop version 21, the 2020 version. What up people, my name is Gene and this is the Feeding Model where we focus on models that feed your eyes and nourish your soul. I'm talking about food, film, and photography as well as everything else in between. Welcome back to my return of subscribers, one time for my first time viewers. You could have been anywhere in the YouTube world, but you're here with me. So real quick, I wanted to just go over some of the features available on the new version of Photoshop 2020 version 21. We'll be going over some of the bigger ones, just a handful of features that are super dope and I think it's gonna be really useful in workflow and saving time and just overall convenience and just ease of use. It's pretty dope. So I got a photo here already locked and loaded in Photoshop. Let's jump right in and see what we can do with this with the new features available to us. So first thing first, let's talk about the biggest one, the one that's really the game changer and that is the um, object selection tool. And real quick, if you updated to this new version and the object select tool is not where Adobe said it would be, which is with the other selection tools, don't even worry about that. I think what happened was, cause it happened to me, I think what happened was when you update it, if you carry over your previous preferences versus taking what comes with the app, it may get buried in the additional tool. So you'll have to just customize your toolbar to get that back on there. So all you'd have to do is click and hold for your additional tools, um, edit toolbar, scroll down where it says object selection tool, click and hold that and drag it over to the other tools like the quick selection and the magic wand and click done. And now you'll have it there with your other tools versus having to keep going here to the additional tools. And you can edit your toolbar to pretty much be however you want it, whatever your most used tools are. So, um, so for the object selection tool, it's a pretty cool tool. Basically what it's doing is similar to the select subject tool that was previously on here. The only difference now is that you're telling Photoshop where specifically you want to extract the focal point, the object in your photo. So if you would click select subject and let that do its thing, you would see how it chooses its best guess as far as what's the main subject in this photo. Now with the object select tool, you can pretty much highlight, click and drag and highlight where you want Photoshop to do the analyzing and extracting the object. Like for example, each cookie here, or you would highlight all three and it would pick all three. And you can also, you have an option of using both the rectangle or the lasso to draw in certain areas that you would want to be chosen. So like if I wanted to add this, the cookie jar, I would just do that and you can see how it chooses that additional to the three cookies. If you want to subtract, same thing, you would just draw a circle around the object and it subtracts that, which is pretty cool. Very, very cool. Like this is some ill magical Photoshop wizardry type of thing going on, man. I don't even know how they do this, but it's, it's just dope, easy. It's gonna make the workflow nice and smooth for a lot of people, especially myself. And if you scroll down through the properties, you'll also notice that they have a remove background feature as well, which is gonna do something similar to the select subject and it's gonna create a mask for you right away. So you can fine tune that, clean up your edges and um, pull up for a second. Let me see how nice this thing is. I got this picture here that I took a while back in New York of the Flatiron building. Um, so let's see how nice this background removal tool actually is. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but in the properties now you can actually choose 
to convert to layers if you have a smart object like before you had to right click and choose rasterize etc but now everything is here you can convert to layers and if you have a smart object that you took apart into multiple layers you can actually convert it back to a smart object once you're done without having to open like multiple windows across the top and go like diving into the additional layers and making your modifications and then having to copy and repay some very convenient dope shit. All right, so let's choose this. Um, let's convert this to a layer real quick and we scroll down and let's remove background. Not bad, not bad. As you can see, I already created a mask for us. So considering that there was the sky, the clouds, um, some buildings here, that's actually not bad at all. They did a pretty good job if you ask me. This is gonna be very useful for creating product images and listings for like um, websites, uh, um, shops, uh, Amazon. This is gonna be really good for things like that. If you wanna create a product image with just a white background, this is gonna come in clutch. So for content aware fill, they've updated that so you can be a little bit more precise in how you want Photoshop to analyze the, your selection. So let's say if I chose this cookie right here and I wanted to remove that, I would select that along with the shadows, go over here to edit, choose content aware fill. So we have auto option where Photoshop is gonna do its own thing and sample from where it fills it is necessary to create this content aware fill for you, which is gonna give you this here, this result here. Uh, we have rectangular, which is going to be a rectangular shape of the sampling area, which we don't want because we don't want it picking up any of this as far as sampling. And then we have the custom where if you read here, it's going to say use sampling brush to add the sampling area in order to fill the selected region. Right. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to brush in the areas that you want to sample. So for example, I would choose a little bit over here, maybe some over here, but maybe, you know, a spot here, just so that this looks as good as it can possibly look, which that isn't too bad. And once you are satisfied with your selection, as far as the way the image look, which this doesn't look too bad, you can just hit okay and tweak that as needed. And there you have it. You can mess around with that, move it around, feather it out the edges so that you can get it exactly how you want it to look. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so what are, I don't even know what I just covered. So we talked about the object selection. We talked about um, some of the properties, content aware fill. Now I wanna talk about this zoom feature where you can zoom to the layer itself. So let's say if I was working on this cookie and you know doing some kind of touch up on there, if I wanted to zoom to the cookie above it, all I would have to do is hold the option key and click that layer and it's gonna take me directly to a full zoom and so on. And it'll do this for all the layers that you have. So if I wanted to work on this cookie jar or if I wanted to work on this bottom cookie, um, just hold the option key and click on the layer so that it can zoom in full and put the cookie in full in the window. So that's pretty cool. A nice little convenient added option there. Oh, real quick before I go, another quick feature that Photoshop added was toggling between the brush and the eraser. You no longer have to hit the E key or go down here and choose the eraser. So if you were to brush a few strokes, you can just hit the tilde key, which is left of the number one key and easily erase your brush strokes at the same size. You don't have to worry about having a different eraser size as compared to what the brush size was. So that is super convenient. I think that's gonna be one of the most used features aside from the object selection tool. If you wanna see a full list of the features available on this 2020 version of Photoshop, just head over to Adobe and click on the latest version and check them out. You can see how like a lot of these features are gonna add ease of use and um, it's gonna create a better workflow. Like I said, the more I familiarize myself with these features, the more I will make videos about them and how we can use them and implement them. I just wanted to get on here and just show a little bit of what's available as I'm excited to use them. 
I'll probably be doing one for both um, Lightroom as well as Premiere Pro, you know, going over some of the new features on those apps as well. Yeah, definitely check them out, messing around with them, get familiar with what's available on there. And that's all I got, man. That's all I got. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to stick around and learn a little bit more of what I'm doing here as far as creating content for um, food and product photographers and videographers like myself, definitely hit that subscribe button. Thanks for checking this video out. I feel like my day just started, man. That nap was, that nap was lit. I will see y'all in the next video. Peace. I'm not really a big fan of taking naps, but when I do like get that nap in, boy, does it feel good, man. I really need to start taking naps more often. I think that's what I need to do.